Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Emma Mills and today we're going to be talking about being in uptime or being in downtime. So regulating our attention um, throughout the day and, and I think it's a fantastic awareness-based practice. I'm, I'm glad to be here sharing it with you and hope you find it interesting too. So this is perfect if, you've, if you ever find yourself on either end of this spectrum. If you find that either you can't relax, you're always on, always going, or you find that you're sometimes too lost in your own thoughts and feelings, um, your own worries, your own concerns, self-conscious, um, too lost in your own thoughts and feelings about things. And so, of course, we each of us will move between those positions, a lot, a lot of us anyway, during the day. Um, but I think this activity and this exploration can be really helpful there. So let's start by looking at the uptime and downtime. So um, uptime is when your attention is focused outwardly, on other people, social things that are happening around you, the environment, you're paying attention out there to what's happening. Now, um, downtime is when your attention is focused inwardly on your own self, your, your thoughts and feelings. So downtime um, in this context, it's not the same as a relaxing afternoon down at the pub or sitting on the sofa watching Netflix. That downtime is kind of that relaxing downtime, but we're still, in those examples, we're focused outwardly still on the TV, on a book, in this context here, I'm using the word downtime, downtime to mean when our attention is turned inwards to our own thoughts and feelings. So that's just a bit different. So we've got uptime, focus out, got downtime, focused in. And so let's talk about the benefits of being in uptime. So when you're in uptime, you're going to be um, paying attention to what's happening. You can, you're at a meeting, you're focused outwardly. And uptime's fantastic for being in meetings you can listen to what's being said, you're paying attention to the other people there. Um, it's really helpful. Um, can you imagine if you're in a meeting and you get um, too much in downtime and you start uh, daydreaming, <laughs> as nice as that can be, daydreaming, you're in your own thoughts and feelings. Um, it's not always that helpful. So being in uptime in a meeting is really good. Also, let's say if you go out on a date or out with new friends, if you're in uptime, you're focused outwardly, your attention, your eyes are looking up and out at them and your attention is um, on the person, not on your own self. And if your attention does go in to focus on yourself too much, you can start to feel, you'll know it because you start to feel self-conscious or very self-aware and, and that, that's uh, the attention is going the wrong way. And now, of course, um, you know, we navigate this sort of fine line uh, during a date or out with friends or at work where we're simultaneously aware of what's happening inside and what's happening outside. I'm just talking mainly about the having the majority of our attention outside. Yeah? So uptime is fantastic and you can probably think of some times where uptime is really useful for you to be paying attention looking out there. So downtime on the other hand is really helpful when you are meditating, when you're doing yoga, when you are going to see a coach or a therapist let's say and they're asking you questions or you're discussing things that cause you to turn inwards and reflect on something when you're journaling or writing in your diary these are all really good downtime things the opportunities to turn inwards and reflect and so in all those circumstances downtime is really helpful when our we're, usually when we're in downtime we're either writing or thinking and our eyes kind of come down a bit we're, we're inside you can even see in the posture of the body we've, we've gone inwards and so that's downtime and of course you can um, in the course of our day we navigate between these two points uptime and downtime we're paying attention here we're no longer in the meeting maybe we're doing something else we've become aware of the inner world and our own thoughts and feelings but I think it's really helpful to be aware of where the attention is in any given moment. For example, if you're someone that struggles to switch off, that's always on, you're always in uptime, it can be helpful to notice that and to think, well, actually, I do, I do go to work, I'm in these meetings, I'm focused outwardly, and then I um, go home and I have my, my family or my friends or my housemates or my relationship or, or whatnot and I'm focused outwardly and then perhaps I'm on social media and I'm watching the television or I'm reading a book or my attention's always out and if you're quite happy in that position let's say that orientation then that's just perfect it's just this is this uh, video is here if you find that you've gone out of balance slightly and you want to kind of explore something new and so some people are very happy to be outward facing all the time and so 
it can help from time to time if, if you can relate to that not switching off is to say oh okay I'm in uptime my attention's going out and to take up a hobby like journaling take up a is it is that a hobby I'm not sure take up journaling take up meditation take up yoga take up another awareness based practice um, there's a very variety of movement um, and dance classes out there awareness through movement the Feldenkrais method um, uh, different dance practices um, somatic dance where you're encouraged to look inwardly and connect with how you feel those sorts of things and so adding something like that into your day if you feel like you're always in go you're always focused outwardly you burn out can be really helpful and, and I think also just having the awareness of where your attention is in any given moment is is a blessing now, on the other hand, if you find that you are too often in this inward posture, you're turning inward, aware of your own thoughts and feelings, there are a couple of things I think can be really helpful. Number one is, is um, practice awareness. So when you are in a meeting or when you are on a date or you're out with friends, where there are going to be other people to attend to, um, be mindful and be aware and maybe without judgment and without being hard on yourself at all because it, it's all an exploration for all of us that's all we're doing exploring this this um, mad existence we share uh, but you you gonna see where is my attention if you're in a meeting and you start to feel shy or self-conscious you can consider ah, oh, have I gone inwards can I turn and you can always imagine um, um, what it's like to have a, your torch your torch of attention, torch of awareness is pointing in towards yourself. If you notice it, just imagine turning it back out on the other person. Pay attention, bring yourself back out, pay attention, listen, take them in, listen to what's happening. And and of course you don't have to do that. If you're happy in your orientation of being in, but that's perfect too. This is just to even the balance if you find yourself going out of, out of harmony. So um, number one, be aware, be mindful. Um, and learn and make it an inquiry to go and learn something in your day to day about the way that your attention goes in and out. It'd be fascinating to discover you know, just how it works where you are for you and your body. The other thing I think is really interesting is to when you go for walks or when you go outside or you go and see a movie or something like that, practice paying attention, practice noticing um, the sights, the sounds, the smells all the sensory information coming in that, that's available and suitable for you, notice that and um, let yourself be captivated. And again, practice awareness. If you find yourself going in too much, just turn back out again to enjoy what's happening out there. Another thing that can be really helpful is volunteering or helping others, even if it's not in a formal way, is a really great way to turn the attention from focusing so much on how you feel to focusing more on, on another person. That's another way to do it and so that is um, uptime and downtime I hope you enjoy discovering uptime and downtime and maybe you can have a really interesting inquiry of your own in your day-to-day -day life where am I in uptime when I when am I in downtime and am I using them in the right places just as an exercise in awareness now I think there is also another kind of time which is um, which I think is you know, not to want to complicate matters, but is um, when we are, um, let's say, experiencing something very beautiful, whether it's a beautiful nature scene or a sunrise or a woodland or a beautiful piece of art or music or something like that, something that is so beautiful that it inspires awe. Can you think of a thing like that? so lovely and when you experience it let's say um, uh, I'm gonna just pick something let's pick something visual if that's suitable for you um, but when you experience that I think it's it puts us in a place of where we're it, it enables us to be in both uptime and downtime at the same time because we're captivated on the outside by this beautiful vision but in the inside we're aware of this great feeling of awe and splendor and as um, uh, um, as the poet Hafiz would say um, true art awakens the extraordinary ovation and that's the thing that's happening on the inside the extraordinary ovation um, and and uptime and downtime collide and come together and, and and I think that this is an example of the collapse of attention where we find that 
um, um, slightly on a tangent here, where our awareness of what's happening, um, usually our awareness is very broad. Awareness is like a, a big broad light lighting up the whole scene and then our awareness narrows into a torch to become attention. We pay attention to this thing with a thought and then as soon as we stop paying attention, the awareness, the light of the torch expands back out again to be a broad Sabbath day. And so in this experience of beauty, it seems to me that the attention um, dissolves back into awareness um, and we can um, experience this uh, unity of uptime and downtime where, where there's, there's no um, awareness isn't the taking the form necessarily of attention, but it is um, still very beautiful anyway. So that's, that's something else to consider. I hope that hasn't bamboozled anyone. It's definitely a thing it's bamboozled me. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this, on awareness, on attention, on uptime and downtime. Is it something that you've explored? I hope you find it helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, leave me a comment. And um, the you, uh, I've written about this on the blog. So if you do prefer to read about things rather than the videos, you can visit emmamillslondon.com where I keep all my articles and my ideas. We've got wellness, mindfulness, poetry, meditation, um, ideas for living well. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.